Hello everyone and welcome to the final episode of Prehistoric Planet Ice Age, the Big Melt. So this episode basically takes place at the time that the Ice Age was ending and the world was sort of reverting to the one that we know today, becoming warmer, the ice caps shrinking again to a more, a more manageable size and finding an equilibrium and also just seeing the disappearance of many of the animals that we have grown to love in this series. So without further ado, let's get into it. We open with the Homotherium on the snow-covered tundra, and I picked out this shot as the yawn was just so realistic, reminding me of a lot of the yawns I've seen from lions and tigers, looking very much like this. But these cats are hungry and haven't eaten for a while, and so need a source of food and soon. But they may be in luck. A mammoth herd. Huge prey, great risk. But the cats don't have much in the way of alternatives. In the opening montage, we see a clan of cave hyenas crossing some mountainous terrain. And this great shot of a male megaloceros bellowing into the sunrise. The homotherium make their move against the mammoths, charging down the mountain slope with their greatest danger coming from an adult male. He charges out to meet the cats before they can reach the herd. The lead female leaps onto the mammoth's back, climbing around to get at the head. The other cats try to tackle the mammoth from behind, but being dealt deadly kicks. Now on the head, the mammoth throws the cat down onto the ground to escape. With the homotherium's first attempt ending in a failure, we proceed to move on to a bay at the foot of a glacier, where meltwater has enriched the growth of a kelp forest, bringing in visitors in the form of the Stella's Sea Cow. Using their flexible lips, they dredge the kelp up, much like their relatives the manatees and dugong do when feeding on seagrass. However, when the tide goes out, these buoyant giants can sometimes strand on the nearby shore. Being far too heavy to move, the stranded sea cow has to wait for the tide to come in again. Though unfortunately, he is not alone on this beach. A short-faced bear, likely the species Arctodus simus, one of the largest bears ever and a formidable predator to any prey to cross its path. Arctodus, which was the North American species um, of short-faced bear that ranged far up into Western Canada and Alaska where this scene is likely taking place. Standing up on his hind legs, the bear draws in a strong smell. The smell of fresh food. And he finds it. The stranded Stella's sea cow that has become a perch for some arctic terns. The bear investigates and discovers this mysterious creature is very much still alive. Using his powerful jaws and fearsome claws, the Arctodus tries to break into the skin of the sea cow, but its inch thick skin is too tough, even for the weapons of the largest predator on the continent. His futile attempts are, for the sea cow, more of a free massage and back scratch than anything he has to worry about. As the tide comes in, the sea cow is able to start making an escape and manages to get back into the sea to continue grazing. We see what looks like a species of plover, though I am unfamiliar with its specific species. The whole scene was, for me, rather bittersweet, as if not for us, with our spears and our harpoons that we developed long after the time that this scene was taking place, we would still have these wonderful, wonderful am animals in the coastal seas of the North Pacific, but alas, we were the ones that drove this species to extinction and not the climate change of the late Ice Age. Moving further south from Alaska, we head to the southwestern United States. Here we see a great horned owl, as well as a white-tailed or mule deer in the darkness, and the Columbian mammoth, feeding at night as this area hides a hidden danger. As the sun begins to rise, so does the temperature. And as our mammoth roams, he meets a patch of black pavement amongst the grass. And underfoot, this black pavement squelches with every step. This unlucky mammoth has found himself trapped in a tar pit. Tar pits were a rare but very deadly fixture of the southwestern landscape. During the night it is cool and solid, safe to walk across. But during the day, this black substrate that oozes from below the ground becomes warmer and more viscous, becoming a sticky trap for any unfortunate animal to venture on. 
The scene is likely depicting the La Brea Tar Pits, a famous fossil site for Pleistocene fauna with millions of animals that have been found trapped in this tar, from insects like beetles and ants, all the way up to saber-toothed cats, bison and mammoths. Drawn in by the smell of prey, a female Smilodon fatalis, the North American species in this genus, with her young cubs. The sun is low, and so the tar is cool and safe to reach the mammothon. The family gets stuck into the meal. However, trouble is on its way. Anus Scion, the dire wolf, fearsome pack hunting predators that have actively competed with Smilodon for thousands of years. As the pack approaches, the family realizes they're in danger, and not just from the wolves. The tar has begun to liquefy, and the mother's paw has become stuck. Using their acute sense of smell, the wolves are able to find a safe path across the tar. Even though she is stuck, she is still not willing to go down without a fight, and defend her cubs for as long as she can. The wolves snarl in retaliation, ready for combat. The pack charge in, and the Smilodon defends with powerful swipes, tipped with sharp claws. A direwolf grabs one of the cubs, and this is all that is needed for the mother to find the strength to break free and rescue her cubs, tackling one wolf into the tar. Now free, the family retreats, leaving the wolves to deal with the tar. The one she tackled has become trapped, and there is nothing it, nor the pack is able to do to save them. Over 5,000 direwolf specimens have been found at La Brea, showing that over the course of history, the direwolf was a fairly common predator during this time. Onto the tundras in the north, we see a herd of reindeer, and among them, a megaloceros stag, sporting 12-foot antlers. This species is struggling as the warming conditions have allowed for forests to sprout, enclosing the land that was once open steppe. Next to the reindeer, you can see just how large this deer really was, bigger than even modern moose. On this tundra, we also see an arctic hare. His antlers that he used in the breeding season to win mates are now a handicap, leaving him vulnerable to predators, able to use the increasing forest to their advantage. A clan of cave hyenas, double the size of modern spotted hyenas and an ancient rival to the megaloceros. The hyenas pursue him down a slope, using a tactic used by many predators today, keeping their prey running so they don't have time to rest and eventually exhaust themselves, making them an easy game. Cornered by the stream, the hyenas may get their meal sooner than they expected. But the stag makes a miraculous leap across the gully, creating distance between him and the hyenas. Stuck, the hyenas will need to find another way around to reach him and the Megaloceros retreats into the forest to gain some ground and try and hide. Down around the equator, we arrive on the island of Madagascar. In these forests, there are many strange animals, including the Tenrex, and the egg of the heaviest bird ever to live. Apionis, the elephant bird, though not quite as tall as the mowers of New Zealand, it is much heavier, weighing up to a ton in weight, a real Ice Age dinosaur. This father's egg is late to hatch. A red rough lemur looks down from the branches onto the growing convoy of elephant birds. Elephant birds try to synchronize their hatching and move off in a flock towards the growing wetlands. Now out of its egg, the chick is ready to go. But there are dangers in this forest that look for any opportunity to try and snatch a chick, let alone one with its father lagging behind the rest of the group. Not this little chameleon though. A giant fossa, black in coloration to hide in the shadows of the forest. This color choice was used in Mal as in Malagasy folklore, they witnessed this fossa species before it became extinct. You have the brown smaller one that is still in Madagascar today, and the large black one that is now gone. We see the largest modern lemur, the Indri as well. The fossa charges for the chick, and we get our best look at the full body of the animal, muscular and powerful. This is certainly the most formidable predator that lived in Madagascar at the time. But is fended off by the father with delivering powerful kicks and letting the, the fossa rethink what meal it's going to go for next. Many elephant birds gather at the wetlands that have now filled with water thanks to the recent rains. Among them, 
The straggler male and his chick survived the fossil attack and, they have, and have made it successfully. This species would continue to survive in Madagascar right into the time of human civilization, all the way up until it was hunted for food and eventually disappeared from the Madagascan landscape. Back with the Megaloceros, he is lost amongst the trees, and the hyenas have found a crossing across the river. He flees through the trees, but becomes stuck. His 12 foot antlers are now tangled in the branches. The hyenas have him cornered. There doesn't seem to be a way for him to escape. In the commotion, a Eurasian jay is startled, and the hyenas feed on the antlers. Their strong bite force able to bite clean through them to the marrow within. However, our Megaloceros has actually escaped, shedding his antlers to get him out of a tight spot, and he will grow them back for the next breeding season, if he survives to make it, that is. Returning to the Homotherium, they have been tracking the mammoths for a few days. The male they attacked is injured and has been weakening, now straggling behind the rest of the herd. The cats perch on the cliffside, ready to strike. Hiddleston narrates um, that the saber-toothed cats have the power of lions and the agility of leopards, which I can only imagine is fairly accurate, as they are fairly lightly built, but also really powerful as well. They successfully ambush the injured mammoth and bring him down. Now they'll hopefully be able to survive to see spring. But the end of the Ice Age means the end for all of these spectacular creatures, as their world changes to more so reflect the one that we know today. But for now, the Mammoths and the Homotherium will survive. At least until the next chapter of Earth's history begins, with the children of the Ice Age, Homo Sapiens. And with that, Prehistoric Planet Ice Age comes to an end. And I really enjoyed this series overall, it was a really great representation of the Pleistocene, really cool animals overall and brilliant CGI. I really like the Megaloceros and tar pit scenes in this episode. They were really well done. And yeah, if you enjoyed this series of videos and you enjoyed the series Prehistoric Planet Ice Age, leave your thoughts down in the comments. What was your favorite animal? What was your favorite sequence? Let me know down there and I'll see you in the next one.